well, uh, there's pressure out there, which is better than no wind. Yeah, all good. All good, except for tomorrow when it's looking a little bit hairy. Yeah, tomorrow looks challenging. Um, so I think we just have to wait and see uh, what materialises. Um, the weather forecasts have been pretty c consistent and clear over the last few days. And, and, and when these storms approach, which, are, you know, they're big lows going by Bermuda, you know, they... Yeah. They seem to travel slowly and accurately and, you know, like a big ship, they don't change course that easily. So, and there's no geographical influence from Bermuda to make them change course, so they just come over. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it looks windy. It looks very marginal on our wind limits tomorrow. Um, we're going to be up there today even, so yep. exciting days. Well, at least you still have Thursday that you can use... Yeah, well, look, we're on schedule, um, so that's good. Uh, we can run races, a lot of races in the day if we need to. So, you know, we'll have a good day on Thursday, I think, um, and maybe not quite catch up, but look, we'll be close and we'll manage it. Now, let's talk a little bit about yesterday. I think you and I were both excited to see the match-up between Land Rover BAR and Emirates Team New Zealand, but that didn't eventuate the way we thought. Well, it was looking like quite a good race yeah. when, you know, when Land Rover broke. Um, there was a nice exchange at the start and, and they took different tactics into the bottom mark and had a nice split going and Land Rover was pushing pretty hard. They went around that bottom mark doing 38 knots and, and that was just all a bit too much for something in the wing and, and it let go. So, you know, huge disappointment for Ben and, and his team and... You know, there's definitely been significant improvements in that boat um, and then for it to all just fall apart at the first and second mark rounding, I, you know, was was a tough blow for them. Yeah, definitely a tough blow and I don't remember Ben Ainsley retiring before and he doesn't actually and you've had two of his retirements this regatta. Yeah, Ben's not normally in this position. Normally he's in, you know, incredibly well prepared, reliable boats and it's, it's, they've been sort of chasing the catch up and, and making modifications all the time and, you know, probably the effort and emphasis has gone on that and hasn't, the reliability and time on the water hasn't caught up with the continual changes and, and that's the price that you pay. Yeah. And we saw two black flags yesterday. Just explain, um, perhaps to those who don't understand, that that black flag isn't necessarily a disqualification against Ben, it's more so that the races can continue flowing. Yeah, it's a conclusion of the race. It's, it's nothing to do with Ben. It's the fact that uh, a boat has no one to race and, and they're effectively being declared the winner. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Now, today, what can we expect out there on yesterday? You said a little bit more breeze? Uh, a lot more breeze than yesterday. Yesterday was that sort of 13 to 14 knots, which is the champagne sailing yeah. for these boats. And today we're moving into the top end of racing and the beginning of survival mode with these boats. So you're going to see, I think, different sort of strategies. Um, you know, maybe the crews struggling to back these boats off enough that, you know, the top mark roundings, the bottom mark roundings, the reach roundings, um, trying to play with, you know, where to place their boats and not exceed the maximum speeds, you know. It's funny you say, you know, they're trying to slow the boats down, but at times I'm sure that's the case. Yeah, definitely, except for that first um, reach mark where a lot of people don't understand they've got to actually try and send that boat around there to get it around as quickly as possible. <laughs> well, that's where we see the top speeds, but there's a, you know, they sort of have set a top speed for the hydrodynamic foils they have on their boats, and, and uh, as the loads go up at the, in, at the squared rate of the speed... Um, you know, they've got to be really careful they don't exceed their maximum loads. Um, so they, they've tuned their boats to be great around the race course. It's not necessarily about top speed. Oh, definitely not. They want to win races, not, you know, just go fast. And, and you were saying yesterday that they're actually chasing VMG downwind, not speed. Well, I think you saw the, the race with Ben um, and New Zealand. Yeah. You know, New Zealand chased VMG to the first mark. Ben chased speed and tactics and the end result is sort of similar but it opened up the strategies. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really interesting. Well, have a great day out there. Hopefully there's some good pre-starts for you to watch as well. Well, uh, as you can see, they're, they're all sharpening their skills up there and they're not afraid to push it and their time on distance judgment, uh, execution and manoeuvres between the boats is 
simply a little breathtaking at times. So <laughs> we, we all sit back and whoa, <laughs> live in awe of what these guys, you know, Are what they do. do. Oh. Just awesome. Well, enjoy your day, Ian. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> See you then.